Okie dokie, well, good morning everybody, and time once again for my cast. Um, let me intro this music real quick. Um, and I'm, I'm kinda risking it here. Um, oh, the name of the album is Nuki Buki, The Headless Terror. This is, um, Japanese black metal. Um, but I'm, I'm kinda risking getting a copyright claim on this. Or, let me rephrase that. I, I risk having my video copyright claimed. I bet this because uh, it I don't have the best of luck when playing Japanese stuff so it they it that kind of stuff all always seems to get me off they're all Japanese stuff is almost always copyrighted but but this channel here um, order of the black arts that's the uh that's the uh, channel I'm getting this from usually their uh their music is copyright free so this is kind of a 50-50 proposition here, but like I said, I really like this album. It's cool as hell. Um, if you're into if you're into black metal, so. But let me go ahead and I'll get this going. So I'll it's this this music here is worth the risk. I mean it's it's freaking black metal from Japan. I mean last place I'd expect to have black metal. Usually I expect it in like somewhere in uh, America or Europe. <laughs> Definitely not in Japan. And also, there's um, there's gonna be a lot of moving parts on this one, so I'll just get ready for some mistakes to be made. So. But otherwise, uh, pretty bad stream, uh, pretty bad stream yesterday. It just uh, some bad sleep. Just, I mean, I think I got the normal amount, like between six to seven, but unfortunately, all of it was dream and nightmare filled. So when that happens. It's like I hadn't slept at all, so... I mean... The Gems of War part of the stream went alright. But, uh, once, uh... Once I switched over to Pinball, I totally and completely sucked ass. But, um, a lot of that, too, was probably due to the fact that... Instead of maybe... Laying down and taking a nap... And then coming back and streaming Pinball... I decided to go ahead and just keep right on going. I think mainly because one of my regulars... Um, Kitaro87 was on, at, was on at that time, so I figured might as well get the pinball up and running while he's still here. So, wasn't sure if he'd be back or not if I, if I took a nap. So, um, but, what a, oh, but, um, anyway, I ended up abandoning the session about a half hour, 45 minutes in. It, there was just no point in going on. So, um, but one thing I did do is... For the short amount of time I was uh, streaming pinball, he did request a table called Earthshaker. Um, did okay. Definitely could have done better. So what I went ahead and did is I uh, took my nap, came back, and just uh, I uh, made a recording of me playing Earthshaker, like just for him. So, which I did much, much better. I think... Uh, I think in the vid, I think the first, the first attempt during my stream, I think I had like somewhere between five to ten million, which is pretty below average. I mean, my highest score on there, I think, was like forty-five million. That's pretty, pretty damn good. Um, this time around, I think I got in the vicinity of uh, I think it's twenty-three million. I mean, half of my high score, it's still pretty good though way better than my first attempt so so hope he's happy with that okay um and also a bit later on I decided to go ahead and give uh, Street Fighter their 30th anniversary comp compilation I decided to try that out again um, and this time, I, I fixed, I actually fixed the sound problem. Uh, cause, all the way up until recently, it has been giving me nothing but problems. That major sound problems, they would keep on cutting out on me. You know, it just, uh, the constant sound stuttering. It, it got annoying. So, it, 
it just kept on doing that, but I actually fixed it by turning the V-Sync off, of all things. I don't know how that, I don't know how it worked, uh, but V-Sync is something that, that's meant for, uh, that's meant for video, not audio. I mean, V-Sync is what you turn on to keep your screen from tearing, like if the, like the game, like the game, the game and your the game you're playing and the screen you're playing on aren't in sync with each other, so it causes you a screen to tear. So I just figured, oh, what the hell? I'm curtain hurt, you know. So turn it off, and next thing you know, everything sounded nice and normal. But now I'm faced with another problem. I can't turn the I can't turn the damn music off. I mean, for those that know me know I'm the kind of person that I like to bring in my own music to listen to while streaming. You know, with, uh, with rare exceptions, but like the in-game music and most other games I play, I'm really not a fan of. So... But yeah, and, uh, I played, um... I played uh, Third Strike, and I played Street Fighter 2, like, the granddaddy of them all. Unless you count the first Street Fighter, but it's, to me, uh, the first Street Fighter is a bit of an outlier. But yeah, just um, but I just I piddled around on I piddled around with uh, Hugo. That's his name. Um, on Third Strike, I played played Hugo, just played on my training mode. Um, tried to do an arcade run, only got as far as like maybe the the second opponent and got my butt kicked. Uh, same thing with uh, same thing with uh, Zangief uh, when I played Street Fighter 2 and uh, just played Zangief I got as far as maybe maybe the second opponent and I got my butt kicked by him so but I do I do have to say uh, oh and that, that was something else too uh, in Street Fighter 2 the training mode is non-existent so that's that's a big minus with me um, on third, third strike, it's got a training mode, but there's no, there's no spar option, for lack of a better word. You can't, you can't set your training dummy to CPU or to just play. You can only set your dummy to either, either stand, crouch, jump, or make a record, or you can make a recording. You can make a recording of your opponent doing whatever you want him to do. And then you can play it back, but that's all you can do. You can't, you can't just set them to, to fight. So, but yeah, um, but yeah, as far as um, but as far as uh, those Street Fighter game, if I was to ever, if I was to ever play Street Fighter consistently, that probably be my first choice, a grappler, a grappler like Zangief. And I think in Dirt Strike. I think the only grappler in that game is uh, Hugo. I don't think there's any others in there that I know of. So, but uh, to the I think to this day though, with uh, my my favorite grappler character is still got to be Rook, Rook from Fantasy Strike. Um, I guess Zangief in Street Fighter 2 only would be my would be my runner up. I mean, in that game there, Zangief. He has, I think, four different throws. What? A, and, no, I think it. I think five, five throws, one of which can be done while crouching. So I mean that. I mean that's what I call a grapple right there. Because in all these other fighting games I play, I think Hugo's kind of like this too. I don't. Um, he only has like two throws. And uh, I'm not even. I probably have to double check if I can remember to, but uh, I don't think uh. I, I don't like I said I'd probably have to look it up or something but I don't I don't think any of the I don't think any of the characters in there have normal throws but like I said I might be wrong like I said when I first played third strike I went straight to Hugo but but yeah I don't I I tried doing you know walk you know walking straight into the opponent and you hit either you hit fierce I think that's the default throw option I can't do it none None. Like, it, the only throws that I can do with him are ones that have motion inputs. I think he has one where you have to do a, you have to do a half circle 
from forward to back, and then um, and then actually roundhouse. And then he has a he has the spinning pile driver maneuver. You do a full complete circle, and then you hit a punch button. So yeah, but th those are his only two throws that I know of. I mean, not much of a grappler. I mean, the two throws that I think he has, you have to do a motion input for. Zangief on Street Fighter 2, you can just walk, get in nice and close and hit hit one of uh, four attack buttons. Or five if you're crouching. I mean, that's what I'd call a grappler. Rook is the same way. But a, but a big a big bonus with, um, with Fantasy Strike is there are no motion inputs and there is no crouching in that game. So I could, you know, I could actually, I could actually execute what my mind, what my mind intends to do. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of rambling here. I'm sorry, but there was another video that I, that I watched recently that I really, really liked. It's called Fighting the Game, Motion Inputs. And that video is exactly what my issue is. I mean, in my mind, I know exactly what I want to do when I, or what I want. You know, I know what, exactly what I want to do at a certain moment. And the problem is, is the execution ain't there because, because motion inputs. Whereas Fantasy Strike takes that, you know, removes that issue. So now I can do exactly what I intend to do. Without having to do a fucking half circle or a full circle or even a quarter circle. Or then you got the, you have the Z motion or the... Dragon Punch or, or Z Motion slash Dragon Punch slash DP slash Uppercut Motion. You know, so I can. My Fantasy Strike doesn't have it. I mean, mechanic, mechanically, mechanically, it's probably my favorite fight, 2D fighter. Mechanically, everything else about it though is pretty. It's pretty ass eye rolling. It's just really cringeworthy dialogue and lore. I mean, those that have seen my other videos. They are, you, you probably already know why I don't why I don't like Fantasy Strike. Oh, one other thing, one other thing I forgot to mention too. Um, just to be able to watch watch replays on there, other than the tutorial videos, you have to be a paid member. I think you have to have a subscription. So that's a bit of a rip off there. So I think there is um there are some other perks that you can get for free in other games. That you also have to pay for in Fantasy Strike. There's that as well. The the pay the the pay model, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, but yeah, um, like I said, Rook's my favorite grappler. And uh, I would also say um, I would also say uh. Here, I'll have to, I'll have to add this in. Whoop, can't do that. Can't do that one either. So, guess yeah, so what I'll have to do? Still have to do my workaround. But, um, oops. Fuck. But, like I said, I said at the start that there's going to be some goop ups here. But, anyway, um, I would also play Dal. I would also play Dalsum, but Dalsum in, um, in Fantasy Strike, uh, Argle Gargle is the, um, that's their equivalent of Dalsum. Just, you know, 
long range melee attacks, if that makes any sense at all. But uh problem with him is uh he has a oh, how can I explain it? He's got a he's got a really really wonky moveset that you can't customize for just for you. Um Argagarg from uh Fantasy Strike has that same problem too. He's got some he's got a few moves that are really clunky to real clunky to use. Or I should, or unintuitive. Yeah, I think that's the word I'm looking for. So it, it makes him very hard to play. So, but otherwise, I'm gonna say enough of that. And um, one other thing too is uh, also yesterday, I watched a, uh, I watched an Emperor Lemon video called Sympathy for the Villain, and um. One villain that they mentioned was uh, was Joker, was a Joker, and um, they were mentioning a lot of uh, a lot of footage from the latest movie, the one with um, Jockowin or Jockum, Jockin, I don't know how you pronounce it, Phoenix. So um, but um, I watched, I went ahead and watched that movie, and it 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 kind of kind of reminded me of a movie called Falling Down. It was a movie I watched back in the '90s with Michael Douglas. Um, is more or less the same theme, just like average Joe kind of people that kind of that kind of flipped up, kind of went off the rails, and they just started started really fucking shit up, and stuff like that. But um, one big huge downer with these two movies, though. I mean, theoretically they're awesome, but like I said, uh, one one big uh, issue I had with them is uh, these uh, they're painting these characters. Or let me let me phrase that. Is these characters are being scripted as though they always had mental they always had mental issues, which was a big time downer with me. I mean, I mean, probably uh, my version of the my favorite version of the Joker would had to have been the Killing Joke, because in there, unlike all the other other versions of the Joker, he was just he was basically just. A regular guy, just uh, a stand-up comedian. He's struggling, you know, trying to make ends meet. I think he had a pregnant wife. Yeah, I think he had a pregnant wife. Um, but like I said, he wasn't he wasn't really very funny. But you know, he just you know the same you know same struggle that lots of other people have. You know, they're trying to you know normal people trying to make their you know trying to make their way in the world, and then just um, what was it? He, he, jo he joins in with a few, joins in with a couple gangsters in some chemical plant. They were trying to knock it over. They were trying to steal something. He ends up falling in a vat of chemicals, and then looks at himself in the mirror. And then all of a sudden, psh, then he snaps, and then he, then he goes off the rails and becomes the person we know and love today, the Joker. But no, he didn't. Um, I only read the comic I only read the comic book once, uh, some odd years ago, but. The I don't. There was no history of mental illness that this guy had. Like I said, he was just like you and me. You know, he's trying to keep. You know, he's trying to keep his lights on. But then, in, in that one moment, he just snaps. He goes off the rails. You know, he didn't have that history of mental illness. And I they just. It. I think what what killed it for me with with the today's Joker and falling down is just there's no. There's no real surprise factor now, because if if this were to happen in the real world, very few people would have been surprised by the actions of these guys. You know, oh yeah, he's been a nut. Oh yeah, he's been crazy ever since childhood. Oh, it, you know, or dare I say, a logical pro progression or a natural progression. I always knew he was going to do something like this. Yeah, he's had a history of mental problems. He always was crazy. So it, it, there's no, or at least to me, there's nothing really frightening about it. I mean, again, I wouldn't have been surprised. Um, you know, and I think one of the key elements of uh, shock value is, or you know, one of the key elements of being offensive is hitting them where they ain't. You know, surprising them. You know, but it, I mean, 
if they've had this, you know, mental illness problem since childhood, the surprise factor is gone. That, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's why, uh, why Killing Joke was, uh, considered one of the, one of the, uh, greatest comics of all time. Because that's, that's exactly what happened. That was exactly the canon, or the, the story that played out. Just, nobody expected him to flip like this. Oh, I'm gonna I'm taking a drink of uh, Arizona green tea. Kind of talking myself hoarse here. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, if I can remember to. I might post this, uh, I might post the link to this video in the description. Because, yeah, he, Emperor Lemon does a really great job in uh, dissecting villains and stuff. But I don't, I don't think he ever mentioned, I don't think he ever mentioned what I'm mentioning now, though. Is, again, one of the, one of the key aspects of, one of the key components of shocking people, or offending people, is surprising. You know, doing what they don't expect. I mean, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but it's it's something that, you know, movies like Falling Down and Joker could have been fucking great if, if they were just, you know, if they had always been normal people and not, and not be nut jobs ever since, you know, ever since the way back when. So... Uh, but otherwise, that's going to do it. Um, I pretty much said all the things I wanted to say this morning. And it, it was quite a bit. I uh, made a few mistakes here and there. But like I said, though, or like I said at the start of this cast, there is probably going to be a few goops here and there. Uh, it's like I've also, it's like what I've been saying. Um, it's what I've been saying for years, too. More functions mean more malfunctions. So the more I try to do, the more I, the more I mess up in doing so. But anyway, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good here. Um, but yeah, well, and thanks everybody for tuning in and listening to me. Always appreciated. And I, and I forgot to, I forgot to double check earlier, but I should be on vacation this week, so I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then, see you all next time, and bye for now.